Well, my name is Steve Bowman from Lynchburg, Virginia, and a part of the Liberty Disc Golf team. Uh, my history with disc golf was I started playing as a young teenager out in California, and it was before a lot of the baskets were even in place. Uh, I remember in our subdivision we had uh, light poles that they had created. I think somebody in the in the neighborhood had built a basket type scenario, so we played to the light poles and. Uh, it was just fun. I remember as a kid just loving to throw, loving to play, and uh, the sport was in its infancy. And for me, it was, uh, I think our sporting goods store happened to sell some of the discs, and I had an old AVR, and it was something that I just still have to this day. Uh, I have several of them, so it's kind of neat to show the guys on the team some of the history, how the sport began. Uh, but when I moved to Virginia, there was uh, no disc golf courses. And so my life of disc golf got put back in the bag and, and stayed in storage and um, got really heavily involved in mountain biking. We're right on the Blue Ridge and the Appalachian Mountains. And so I uh, started building mountain bike trails here in our community. And one of our big parks, about a 500 acre park, um, started building mountain bike trails for about eight, nine years. We built eight, nine miles of trails. And uh, I remember at that time, that was the first course that came into, into the area in Lynchburg at Peaksview Park. And so when the course went in, I uh, remembered I had my discs, drug them back out, and being a cyclist, I used to work at the bike shop. I would ride to work, um, commute there, but on the way was the disc golf course. So I remember going and playing in the morning and going back in the evening and playing again and just loved it. And uh, it was the only course we had in, in the greater area, probably 100 miles. And so this was in the early 80s. And as uh, the scene kind of grew a little bit, um, I remember the uh, county next to us in Bedford County asking for me to come out and look at mountain bike trails at another park that they had because I knew I had built the trails and was certified by the International Mountain Bike Association. And so as I went out and looked at the park, um, I just saw a, an immediate layout for a disc golf course. And I told him, I said, well, I, yeah, I'd love to help you put in mountain bike trails, but I, I think you have something better here. And the park was all about putting in unique sports outfits for their park. They didn't want the traditional things like the normal fields and, and courts and all that stuff. So their, their choices were mountain biking, disc golf, and they ended up putting a skate park in and things like that. And so that was my first experience as, as designing a course and putting in a course and building a course. And uh, we had a great time. The course is still, still in play now and just a lot of signature things with it that make that course really fun. And I remember getting a call from Liberty and they kind of asked me, Hey, we, you know, our kids are asking for a disc golf course. We don't really know much about it. We don't know what to do. Um, Bedford County gave us your name and said you were the one to talk to. And so I, I was excited. I was in that design mode and building mode. And so I went out and um, looked at Liberty's property, looked at the things they had to offer and, and had gone to Liberty, played basketball at Liberty and was a part of their program. And, and just growing up in Lynchburg, Liberty is a part of the community. And so I was excited, you know, I was excited to build another course, to have another course to play in the area. But I was excited to have, you know, just that opportunity at Liberty to give back. And so we um, started laying out the course. And, and when the course got done, I remember the Cub Sports um, director coming to me and asking, you know, hey, we have this course. What do we do with it? You know, what are the opportunities that we can have? And, and so I listed a bunch of things. I said they could have the interme inter intramural collegiate sports. I said they could have some club sports. I said they could just have some uh, fun activities for the students and listed about four or five other things that they could do with this disc golf course. And about two months later, um, the same guy called me back into the office and, and those same five or six things they offered me to come be a part of the program and build the program at Liberty. And I was excited, it was great. I mean, I never saw myself being in that coach role, um, but I love to play, I love to teach. And so it was a natural fit. And so the program began about four years ago and it was just a neat opportunity to have that collegiate sport on the Liberty University campus. And so when we started uh, building our first course, we just kind of, um, just went with it, had a blast, put something in tough, something that we could train the guys. It's really a, a training tool to teach kids how to play disc golf and how to get better and how to compete at the top level. That's what Liberty really wanted. They wanted to have the opportunity to win a national championship. And last year we were able in our second flight team to win the national championship last year. And so that was exciting to see the program grow, to see the support from the university. Um, as I sit on our course now, a brand new 20 hole course that we just put in by our camp, um, we're excited. So we have both courses on campus now. The program is going. Um, it's great to have the, the influence for both guys and girls in the program and to have the team just grow in that sport. And so as we started looking around and, and partnering up with different programs, that's what we were really looking for. Someone to come alongside us as a university, us as a club sport to be a part of 
disc golf in the scene. And for us, it was a natural fit to have Prodigy come along. We love the idea of being one of the first courses in the country to have baskets in the ground. And uh, we love playing on the baskets. And it's just amazing to, to just see these guys just start learning how to throw better, learning how the baskets catch the disc better. Um, and that just is an amazing thing to see a product that comes alongside with a training tool that we've done here on the course and to have the discs and have them partner up with our tournaments to give players packs with the Prodigy discs and, and to support our team and have our disc stamp from them. It's amazing. It's a great fundraising event for us, a tool for us to get the nationals every year. And so it's been a great partnership to have Prodigy come along and be a part of this program. One of the amazing things about Liberty Disc Golf is the, the program itself is, is supported and funded by the university. It's one of the few in the country that we have um, the backing from the university like we do. I know, I know a lot of schools um, have programs and, and have the club sports, but Liberty has been really amazing to just come behind, give us the, the facilities, the, the land to put in courses, the opportunities to buy some great baskets, and the support. We use the Liberty vehicles and, and buses and transportation, but more importantly, they dedicate a position as a coach, and that's been my role for the last four years, is to keep the stability of the program, to help grow the program, to keep us in that national scene and so that's been a big part of why I think Prodigy and Liberty have balanced well together because of the commitment to excellence, the commitment to driving the program to benefit the greater good of disc golf and to be an influence in the community of disc golf and to see that as an avenue in which we've played a, a vital role just in the four years that we've been a part of it and hopefully we can help grow the collegiate program to see the other colleges see our model for how we've adapted club sports to replicate what it looks like for an athletic program. You know, we, we are allowed to have a budget and see those opportunities to fundraise and, and use the, the facilities that Liberty has in front of us, whether it be training facilities indoors during the winter time to putt, to lacrosse fields and things like that when it's uh, dark and we've got the lights. And so it's just a neat opportunity to see how the programs can grow and how we can then build into other schools to help them build a stronger foundation to grow their programs and to grow the whole collegiate disc golf world. So as we started hitting the uh, national collegiate scene and being a part of that and learning learning how to be a, a good collegiate team, we started finding out that there were qualifiers and things to be a part of the national collegiate championships. And so it was exciting for us to have that goal to reach for, um, something for the guys and the team and the girls to get excited about. And so I remember our first year going down to Augusta and competing at the, at the National Collegiate Championships. It was just a huge scene. Um, the championships, I think, were in their fifth or sixth year. Um, so it was still really new, but it was still pretty big. And we stepped on board. Um, Liberty is, is awesome to support us. And we had a big, giant bus that had Liberty all on it. And we come rolling in. It was a different scene. I mean, most of the guys commute in their cars. And, and so we had our whole team gear on. And we pull up in a nice bus. And, and we were kind of a shock and awe. And I remember meeting, you know, some connections at Nationals and, and just getting connected with D Dave Greenwell and just really meeting him and just his fire for disc golf and his passion. It was neat to see it. I always heard his voice on some of the videos and, and just making that connection. It was awesome. He, he loved that what we were doing in the program and he was actually a little jealous of, you know, just the support that we had and, and some of the nuances that we had here at Liberty with the turf tee pads and, and just the ability to put a course together in six months is amazing to have teams out here working. So he wanted to jump on board and I remember talking to him early on in the years when we were talking about this new course that we were putting in and and man, we just connected and stayed connected and talked about the new baskets that Prodigy, Prodigy was coming out with. And it was just really cool to see the excitement that they had for just our program as we grew and just for that excitement that they had being a part of who we were. And so we were able to uh, host a national qualifying tournament and uh, Prodigy came on board with some other companies and they were one of our first ones to help get us some great discs to, to give in the players packs. And the conversation kind of kept going on. We were in the process of finding the land for our course. And so by that time, the baskets were in design phase and they were in production and, and it looked like it was gonna be almost that perfect timing fit. And it really was. I think we just started designing the course in uh, 2014, the late summer and the baskets were in production. They were on their way being here. And when the baskets arrived in the country, we were one of the first ones to get the baskets out and get them in the ground. And, they, and we made it in time for our qualifier um, in February of 2015. And so we actually hosted a national collegiate qualifier with the Prodigy New Baskets. And the response was amazing. We had about eight teams come in and compete. They loved the new course, but more importantly, they loved the baskets, getting something different that was out there, something that was catching all the discs and just making something different 
and new. And that's what was so cool to have Project be a part of that, making that cutting edge change for disc golf to grow, to get better, and to be a stronger sport in the community. And so it was really important to have them be a part of it. So this is the T1 uh, Prodigy basket. Um, uh, first off, the color is amazing. It jumps out in the woods. We're at the, uh, the start of spring and you can see how vibrant the color is. But more importantly, it's the amount of chains that help catch the disc. The 20 outer and the 10 inner chains, just really amazing. Give you those extra chains to, to grab the disc and, and bring them right in and set them in the catch basket. Um, the other really important thing with this basket is, is the weight of it, the durability. We've noticed being on a college campus, you know, kids take a you know, little advantage of some things, but this basket is about 20 to 30 pounds heavier than most out on the market, and so it's durable. It's not fun when you move them to alternate positions, so we recommend getting two of them, but uh, for the most part, it is a solid basket. The other cool thing really about this basket is these horizontal, the three chains that are set up across. And for me being a straight putter, this really stops the disc in its tracks. As soon as it hits the chains, it is dead in its motion. And it's amazing how well it just stops that disc and drops it right in the catch basket. A lot of times a disc with speed will bust right through chains if they don't have something like this inner chain that connects it together and locks it together. And it really just slows down the, the disc to, to a manageable amount to stay in the basket. So your percentage of basket drops goes way up and your putting score goes way down. So it's amazing.